And so we turn to our orders of service. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. O Lord, correct me, but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice, unto the throne of heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and have given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins he pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel wherefore let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his holy spirit that these things may please him which we do at this present and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
first reading is from 1 Samuel, chapter 18, beginning at the first verse. When David had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was bound to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul took him that day and would not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that he was wearing and gave it to David and his armor and even his sword and his bow and his belt. David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him. As a result, Saul set him over the army and all the people, even the servants of Saul, approved. As they were coming home, when David returned from killing the Philistine, the women came out of all the towns of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul, with tambourines, with songs of joy, and with musical instruments. And the women sang to one another as they made merry. Saul has killed his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Saul was very angry, for this saying displeased him. He said, They have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed thousands. What more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul eyed David from that day on. The next day, an evil spirit from God rushed upon Saul, and he raved within his house, while David was playing the lyre, as he did day by day. Saul had his spear in his hand, and Saul threw the spear, for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. So Saul removed him from his presence and made him a commander of a thousand. And David marched out and came in, leading the army. David had success in all his undertakings, for the Lord was with him. When Saul saw that he had great success, he stood in awe of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, for it was he who marched out and came in leading them. Here ends the first reading.
second reading comes from St. Luke's Gospel, the 8th chapter, beginning at the 41st verse. Just then there came a man named Jairus, a leader of the synagogue. He fell at Jesus' feet and began pleading with him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about 12 years old, and she was dying. As he went, the crowds pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from a flow of blood for 12 years. And though she'd spent all she had on physicians, no one could cure her. She came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his cloak. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. Then Jesus asked, who was it that touched me? And they all denied it. Peter said, Master, the crowds are hemming you in and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I noticed that power had gone out from me. When the woman realized that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone came from the synagogue leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any longer. When Jesus heard this, he replied, Do not be afraid. Only believe, and she will be saved. When he came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him, except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Everyone was weeping and grieving for her, but he said, Do not cry, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. Taking her by the hand, he called out, Child, get up. Her spirit returned, and she stood up at once, and he directed them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astounded, but he ordered them to tell no one what had happened. Here ends the reading.
believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
us pray. Today the church remembers and celebrates the life and example of Barnabas, um, the one who encouraged the early church in so many ways. We pray that those gifts of encouragement he had may be ours as well this day. Bountiful God, the giver of all gifts, who poured our spirit upon your servant Barnabas, who gave him the grace to encourage others, help us by his example to be generous in our judgments, to be unselfish in our service. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We remember that Barnabas was ultimately martyred for his faith. And so we pray for those churches today who similarly face persecution and the same reality. Remembering particularly the churches of Jerusalem, Antioch and Cyprus. Those which Barnabas knew and those churches today which still do not know peace in our time. So we pray, be merciful, Father of all mercies, to your church throughout the world, when particularly those gathered your name in Jerusalem, in Antioch, and in Cyprus, that they, with all your faithful people, may have the grace to confess your holy name. And especially be merciful to those who are under persecution for their testimony and their profession of your gospel, that as they stand fast by your holy word, so may they be upheld by it. This we pray through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray this evening for those who are in need of encouragement, those who are ill, those who are isolated, those who are in need of prayer for any reason those who feel they are without hope. O God of love and of power, we come to you for those who are ill in body or mind, for those who are cast down. Tell them in the midst of the anxiety and of pain that your name is love. May they know that and may also, since you have made us um, co-opt our wills to yours, we ask that you would use our prayers, that you would turn our caring into their courage, our solicitude into their succor, our faith into their help to get well. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Finally, remembering that we continue to enjoy fellowship with Barnabas and all the saints. We pray for those whom we love but see no longer. Those for those who mourn and miss loved ones. Those who are in need of the hope of God's presence this evening. Lord God from whom neither life nor death can separate those who trust in your love and whose love embraces your children in this world and the next. So unite us to yourself that in fellowship with you we may always be united to our loved ones, whether here or there. Give us courage, constancy and hope through him who died and was buried and rose again for us Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So as you are able, I invite you to stand for our final hymn, number 14 in our red hymn books. Eternal light, shine in my heart. Hymn 1-4. <laughs>
peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.